earliest statements of the Christian faith? Of course, the creed itself was drawn up long after the time of the apostles, but we can say that it has all the stamp of apostolic authority. Christianity is based on a revelation from God that we find in Scripture, and Christians found that when they needed to give a public declaration of faith, for example, when they were being baptized, there was a need for an agreed form of words. And so it's really a summary of the early Christian beliefs. It gathers together the very fundamental facts of the Christian faith and expresses them very, very simply and crisply and clearly. So here's a good foundation and a syllabus for teaching and for the understanding of our faith. In other words, it says, look, here are the major themes of Scripture, creation, fall, redemption, consummation. That helps us explain what the faith is to other people, but also enables us to go back to Scripture and trace these themes for ourselves. If you like, the creed is a superb learning aid for Christians. These words, these short sentences about God, about Jesus, about the Spirit, and about us, encapsulated um, in shorthand form almost uh, what they knew was the faith that the earliest apostles had themselves taught. One of the factors that led the early Christians to realize the need for creeds was that the Bible could be interpreted in different ways by different people. And in the first two centuries, one of the things people discovered was that the Bible was being interpreted in some very strange ways by people. There was a real need for a public, authoritative interpretation of the Bible, something that would be absolutely faithful to what the apostles intended. And one of the reasons why the creeds came into existence was to give the church a public statement of its faith, which was absolutely faithful to Scripture, but also which could be protected from distortion by heretics. And so this is the way creeds originated in the beginning, to instruct new converts, to um, nurture the believers, and also to protect the church against uh, false teachings. Before people got baptized in the early church, uh, they would have gone through a process of instruction. This is not at the time of the New Testament church, but subsequently later. Uh, and uh, they would have gone through what many churches do today by way of instruction in the faith. And it was used as the basis of those what were called catechumenate classes. The early Christians, they were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And with these th threefold baptism, in fact, probably originally threefold immersion, uh, together with that would be three statements, three questions about the Father, about the Son and about the Holy Spirit. The candidate would be asked questions. Do you believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in his Son, Jesus Christ, who was crucified and rose from the dead? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? By the end of the second century, however, Instead of answering questions, the candidate for baptism would make a positive statement. I believe in God the Father and in his Son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. The opening words of the Apostles' Creed uh, say, I believe. Uh, every human being believes something. None of us get through without a framework and a basic set of values and assumptions and convictions on which we base our lives. I remember some years ago visiting a monastery in um, northern Greece and uh, we actually went up a stairway onto this high, high mountain where the monastery was. But until they built that stairway, the only way up into the monastery was in a basket on a rope and they used to winch people up and the basket would come up supported by this one rope. Now, if you want to know what the early Christians meant by believing or by having faith, it was what you have when you get into that basket. You believe that this rope is going to hold you. You trust your life to it. This is the thing that's going to get you up there and it won't break, it won't let you down. And it's that kind of trust of utter reliance on something or someone that the early Christians meant when they talked about believing. So one of the great themes we find in the creeds is that 
God is one in whom we can trust. Belief is a statement of experience. Uh, I think we, we tend to get things backwards. We, we think that you first believe, and then you may or may not experience something. I think for the, for the apostles, experience was primary. Then they begin to try to explain the reality of that experience to those around them and to, to lead others into that same experience of God in Christ through the Holy Spirit. So that, to me, this is the essence of, of the Christian faith, is the experience of life with God in Christ animated by the Holy Spirit. So what you believe about God affects the sort of trust that you can have in God. And it was because the Christians first inherited a belief about God as the creator and the God of justice from the Jewish people, and then because they saw that lived out in Jesus, God as creator, God as the God of justice who would put everything to rights, because they believed that God was like that, they knew they could trust him with their lives and with their whole eternal future. And so believing what they did about God enabled them to trust God. And so the Christian word for faith or belief was born as both a statement about God and a statement about how I trust him.